Did you know that preterism was designed by a Jesuit priest named Louis del Alcazar? Hmm, very interesting. Out here going for a hike this morning, out Saltel Falls, right over that way. And uh, we're heading back to the vehicle. I showed it in the last video. I'm not going to walk down there again. It's a little loud with the waterfall and everything. But uh, hike back through here, climb over these rocks. But um, I get so sick and tired of hearing these uh, preterist historicist people and they come along and they say, Jesuit, you know, the, f the whole thing of futurism, the pre trib rapture and all this, it was designed by the Jesuits. And uh, the truth is in preterism. Uh, well, you're a hypocrite because um, your system was actually designed by a Jesuit priest. And why was it designed by a Jesuit priest? Well, because the reformers were teaching that the Pope was the Antichrist. And um, they were sort of a, a lot of the um, reformers like... Luther and guys like that, um, they believed in sort of a, um, I guess, a amillennial slash postmillennial type of a system where you would have the kingdom is brought in by the church and the there is no the Antichrist, the man of sin. No, it's just kind of the Pope. Whoever the Pope is, he's an Antichrist. And so, you know that's how it works well uh, there's some problems with that scripturally speaking that doesn't work out because um, the book of Revelation is clearly a futuristic book and um, if you're a Bible believer and you have the Holy Spirit within you then you understand that if you're lost well then you don't and that's really the point of this video brethren because um, what you're going to find as a Christian is you will find that there are certain people that it doesn't matter how much truth you show them, they don't understand it. They just don't get it. And um, that's because you're dealing with somebody who's lost. They are not redeemed. They don't have the Holy Spirit of truth in them. You know, Jesus is speaking to his disciples at one point in time and he says that I'm going to separate you from the world, essentially. And they say, how are you going to do that? How will, it, how will you speak to us and not to the world? And the Lord says, I'm going to send the spirit of truth. And when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. And um, that's the truth of the matter. And right now, what we have is we have a lot of people that are walking around claiming to be saved, claiming to be Christians, and they're not. And uh, it's a shame. And we're back to the wacky tree section here if you can just put up with this while I'm crawling along underneath this mess this trail is really ruined since they logged it back in here did a terrible job but hey you know time is money money is time so after if you have to do it then certainly use a little crime to make the money I'm saying but just real quick here, I'm going to go over a number of proofs that the book of Revelation is yet to be fulfilled in the future. It did not, it was not completely fulfilled in the past. And, you know, there's a time interval there that a lot of lost people just don't understand. You have lost Jews and they think that the prophecy of the Messiah is that the Messiah would come and he would bring in the millennial kingdom at the same time that he comes the first time they don't understand that uh, no there's actually a time interval there Jesus Christ is the Messiah for the Jewish people but he didn't bring in the millennial kingdom and he explained why now is my kingdom not from hence it's not right now all right he came and he offered himself as the king of the Jews that's why Pilate when he's crucifying him uh, or leading him away to be crucified, he says, behold the king of the Jews. He knows who he is. He can see it. But the Jewish people at the time, they were being ruled by their pharisaical traditions of men, just like today with the rabbinical um, 
whole system. The system of rabbis in their satanic Talmud, which was not inspired by God. Uh, just the writings of men. More on that in the future. Some very interesting things coming out on that. But Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples and he's explaining to them about the whole thing of uh, his, the signs of the end and whatever else. And so the preterist takes that and they say, well, see, because he's saying that these things are going to be fulfilled, then that means it was fulfilled in the first century. Otherwise, Jesus would be a liar. No, you don't understand. Um, those things are out in the future yet. Okay? And then what they'll do, the preterist, if you're, again, if you're unfamiliar with this whole system that was created by a Jesuit priest, um, what they do is they say everything in Revelation is basically symbolic. So when you have a third of all the trees burning up, you know, around the earth, um, I don't see many burned up trees here. Well, oh, that's right, it happened in the first century. When did it happen in the first century? Where was the huge forest fire? When did all the creatures in the sea die? Those aren't given as symbolic things. They're very literal. Um, never happened in the first century. But see, the preterist liars try to come out and they deceive you in that. And um, I mean, the Jesuits have come up with some pretty good deceptions over the years, but preterism is not one of them. I mean, you have to be rather dense in the head to believe in that, that everything already happened in the first century. But um, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, that the body of Christ is going to be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble gets started. Why? Because it's not the time of the church's trouble, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And all posties, no matter who they are, they get that all mixed up. And now we have to prove, we have to endure to the end and whatever. They don't believe in eternal security. And if they don't, they don't understand the bigger picture of the whole thing. Um, we are sealed until the day of redemption. What is the day of redemption? If you're a postie, the uh, end of the tribulation, is that the day of redemption? <laughs> the redemption of the purchased possession? What is that? Hmm? Um, they don't understand that. Uh, don't fall for this preterist nonsense. And that's what it is. Um, the Bible teaches what many call the pre-trib rapture. And um, anybody that doesn't teach that, uh, they're probably actually prophesying their own future that they aren't going to be leaving. And, uh, well, the Jesuits created it. Um, well, see, here's the point. If the Jesuits created futurism, uh, the pre-trib rapture system, well, then you can easily go through the scriptures and debunk it. Say, oh, wait, this doesn't line up and that doesn't line up and whatever. Um, but if it's Bible doctrine then I should be able to go through the scriptures, prove it, and in fact, the Lord should give even more revelations about it being the truth, which is exactly what has happened. Um, a lot of the things I've preached down through the years, over 160 sermons, I don't even remember what the count is up to right now, but a secondary channel, well, actually the third channel, a brother runs it, I don't run it, but he has it all listed in a playlist, all my teachings on the pre-trib rapture, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Understand that's a biblical term. And uh, out of all those sermons, there's a lot of stuff in there that you will never find in C.I. Schofield or John Nelson Darby or anything else. So um, that leaves you with only a few possibilities. Um, that would be that number one, which is the truth, um, God has revealed these things to me and the members of the body of Christ that tell me about this. What do you think about this, brother? Very good. So the Holy Spirit of God is there separating us from the lost world through doctrine, through the truth. And that's the truth. Or the other option is that I'm a Jesuit and that I am continuing in the line of Jesuit priests before me and um, I'm revealing you know, more deceptions or whatever else, uh, which is absolute stupid nonsense. I am not a Jesuit. I've never even been to any kind of a university, Bible college, seminary, whatever. Um, I haven't been. Uh, and if you want to say, oh, I think Brian's a Jesuit, okay, prove it. 
prove it. <laughs> my personal, what I say, um, you ask me, you say, are you a Jesuit? No, I'm not a Jesuit. Well, you'd lie about it. Okay, and let's go into the Nuttyville Circus and see so you can be the biggest idiot. Let's race to the bottom and see who gets there first. Um, no, uh, I am telling you the truth. I am not a Jesuit. Never have been a Jesuit. I never will be a Jesuit. I don't care what they say or whatever else. I uh, had some, some funny little uh, internet trolls try to say that they're part of some Jesuit order or something and wanted me to join them and whatever, and they offered me $500 to do it. <laughs> you know, what a bunch of idiots. I mean, get back to playing your video games now, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, uh, never, I will never join the Jesuit order. I will die first before I ever join them. And I hate the Jesuit order with perfect hatred. And I'd like to see them get saved and get out of their system. But, uh, yeah, anyhow, enough about that. Uh, not a Jesuit. Sorry to all the little people out there that occupy themselves with nothing else but to hear or tell some new conspiracy. You know, there are, there are normal things in this world. Okay, there, it's not all conspiracy. Okay, I certainly believe in conspiracy theories and whatever else, but... Um, some people just take it way too far. But, uh, so, um, the, again, another big thing against the whole preterist, uh, scam. If what they're saying is true and everything, all the events of Revelation took place in the first century and it's all, you know, the stuff that's clearly literal is actually just symbolic. Um, if that's the truth, well, then you shouldn't see any move for a new world order. You shouldn't see any move towards digital currencies that can ultimately be ultimately turn up as the mark of the beast. Um, everything should be fine. Uh, you won't see any moves towards events in Revelation coming to pass. And the end times, well, that's already been in the past. We're now in the after the end times, I guess, or something. So I guess the world just gets better and better eventually here, or apparently, or something. I have no idea how that works. Um, don't fall for it, brethren. It's uh, really crazy stuff that these people believe in, that they fall for. So just wanted to put that together very quickly here. Uh, just thought that was so funny that all these preterists come out and your system, you know, futurism was designed by the Jesuit order. You're teaching Jesuit futurism. Oh, what's the truth? Preterism. Historicism. Oh, you mean the same thing that was created by the Jesuits? <laughs> Good one. Okay. Real smart there. Uh, so, I think most of my viewers are fairly bright people, but... Um, and... Uh, don't seek to make any kind of um, peaceful terms or whatever else with these uh, wicked preterists because that's what they are. They're very wicked. And, and again, okay, uh, oh, preterism is true. Preterism is the truth. Okay, what about the kingdom of Jesus Christ? What about the millennial kingdom that's promised to him? What about his millennial rule? Does he get it? Oh, that's right. In your system, he doesn't. Hmm. Hmm. So it's a covert attack on Jesus Christ. Huh. Yeah. And by the way, any kind of a post-trib system is also a attack on Jesus Christ. How so? Very simple. Because it turns God into a liar. All through the Pauline epistles, you're promised peace. But yet, Revelation chapter 6, the second rider, the red horse rider, he takes peace from the earth. So how does that work out? Um... God promises you peace, but peace is taken from the earth by the red horse rider. And also you have the body of Christ going into a time where they could take the mark of the beast and lose their salvation, which would cause major contradictions. Because the Bible teaches that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But if you take the mark of the beast, if any man take the mark, worship the beast in his image, he goes to the lake of fire. Hmm. That's a bit of a problem. So you see... Posties and preterists both have this issue where if you believe in their system, 
you actually are attacking Jesus Christ. Very interesting. Huh. That's why you don't listen to either one. Uh, the truth is, the body of Christ is going to be leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. As I've said many times, uh, there are many things that you can say I'm not really sure about or whatever else. Um, the Bible's not crystal clear on everything. When will the catching up happen? Nobody knows. Oh, well, then I can't believe in it because I can't directly know when it's going to happen. I, I need a date and an hour and whatever. No, you don't. Uh, live by faith. Uh, those things are somewhat vague. We see through a glass darkly when it comes to prophecies in the future. But there are some things that are absolutely crystal clear, and that is that the body of Christ will not be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Just that simple. What about saints? It says saints. The Antichrist will make war with the saints. Yes, saints is a generic term for anybody that's saved. They're called saints in the Old Testament. They're called saints in the church age. They'll be called saints in the future. <laughs> okay. Not a good argument. Um, so we're just about back to the road here. Across a little area here. I'll show you. There these logs laid down. A little bit of water running through there. Try to do this without slipping and falling in. That'd be bad. <laughs> bad for the camera. So that is going to be it. Uh, please don't fall for this preterist thing. And again, remember, preterists and posties both are secretly attacking the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, very important to understand that. The preterist, they attack Jesus by saying he gets no millennial kingdom. The kingdom that's promised to him, Psalm 2, Though that's not true, it's just symbolic and whatever, so Jesus doesn't get to physically rule on the earth. The posty says, I'm going to make God into a liar. God promises you peace, peace is removed from the earth, therefore God's a liar. And also you go into a time where you could take the mark of the beast, lose your salvation, and again, God is a liar. Hmm. Year of your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. Uh, and I think you know who the author of the post-trib system and the preterist system, I think you know who the author really is. It's not a bunch of Jesuit priests, it's the devil. Um, the devil is the one that wants to rob you of your joy, knowing that uh, your Lord and Savior is going to be catching you out before he pours out his judgment and wrath on this earth. If you don't believe that, well, you say, well, I, I disagree. Then you need to get saved because you're lost. Um, saved Christians aren't that stupid. I'm just being blunt with you. All right, that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.